welcome to this video about Akadama. This is an Akadama usage approach from somebody who is trying to get away from Ceramis and being dependent on shipping costs and trying to find a replacement that is adequate and as efficient as Ceramis. Thank you. Thank you for clicking on this video. In the recent hmm, five months, I have been experimenting with Akadama. And I only actually bought it as a gut feeling because of its consistency and what I could visually perceive how this material would work as a substitute for ceramis and how I could apply it in the way I cultivate my orchids in different ways. This is an experiment from my side, my current findings and experience with it. So as to make it work to my advantage with orchid roots, with my climate, which is super dry, in several different setups and applications. I hope that you find this video interesting because it is only scraping the surface. There is a lot more that can be done with this material. But for the first part of this video, I just want to kind of explain why I chose Akadama as opposed to Ceramis and not just because of the shipping. Basically, it is also a natural clay-like soil. Ceramis is clay as well. It is chunkier, it is bigger. And Akadama is largely formed as a result of volcanic eruptions from Mount Fuji in Japan. And the particles are granular in structure and they are, can be soft or hard depending on where they are mined. Everything mined from the surface has a little bit more of a softer characteristic to it then the deeper down you go, Akadama becomes harder and harder. The only thing in this case, as opposed to Ceramis, this is a natural product and it comes packed with the benefits of a variety of all the volcanic eruptions. The minerals are packed in there already on a natural basis. It is also inert. Inert being your water is your water pH. The Akadama will not change your water pH. So if you have a very high pH in water or very low pH, the Akadama will not influence or fluctuate that pH range. It's always good to know what the pH is of your water before you put it in contact with your orchids. So that's a benefit there. It is pH neutral. Another pro that I have found is its porosity. It holds water really, really well. However, it is also free draining and you can see how it changes color when it's dry or wet. So if you use it with clear plastic pots, it also helps you to know whether it is time to water or to hold off on watering. And I'm going to show you some examples of that. There is a con because of its porosity and depending on where it has been mined, I don't have on my package a specification that says it's a deep mined Akadama or a surface mined Akadama. It has a lifespan of about two years, depending again how you use it. The classic use of in bonsai were to be considered, because that is what normally is being used for. The trees are mainly outside, exposed to all the elements, and they also are exposed to cold. It is said that the cold temperatures will break Akadama down faster, where it will then lose its porosity and become like a clay-like soil, which of course is not what we want for our orchid roots. And you can see how when I squeeze it between my fingers, becomes like a, a paste. Now it's still quite dry, but imagine that over time accumulating in your pots and around the roots of the orchids. That is a little bit uh, dense. There is no oxygen exchange happening at all. The orchids that I'm working with at the moment are not exposed to cold climates. So I am extending the lifespan of Akadama for at least four years, if not longer, because of how I use it. Another downside is it is very expensive in comparison to other soils or clay that one would be able to use. But it is not in my case because I'm not paying for shipping. So it works better for me 
to be using Akadama as opposed to buying Ceramis and paying for shipping. Let me show you examples of what I am using Akadama and how I am experimenting with it at this point in time. Here I have a Dendrobium Hibiki Keiki in the classic semi-hydro setup with lava rock only. And here I have a seedling of the Cattleya Maxima Alba, which is in my preferred setup of Lekka. And in this case now, Akadama, for it not to suffocate the roots, I have added terrarium grit. Right there you can see. So normally I would be using just ceramis with my seedlings at this stage of their development, but because the Akadama is much more smaller in the granule particles, I have added terrarium grit to keep the aeration going, not clog up the pot, not suffocate the roots. I am still able to flush as per usual, as I would with ceramis. And so far, I have not seen this orchid show any signs of stress whatsoever. I can see in the pot, there's a little bit of a blackening on a new root. I hope, right, right there. There's a black tip, but the root is continuing to grow. So I'm not entirely sure if that is from the Akadama or that is from some cold water that got there and I wasn't paying attention to the temperature of my water. The next thing is the new root coming out in the front and it's heading into the Akadama there as you can see. I am keeping this as a surface media to increase the humidity around the pot seeing as this is a seedling. This is my water retentive humidity layer and I don't see any problem to this day regarding how the roots are responding to the Akadama itself. The Dendrobium hibiki is loving it. You can see how the roots have no problem on the surface there at all. And these roots are new. They weren't in this pot when I potted her up into the lava rock and then interspersed with Akadama. I'm going to continue with this experiment, especially in a semi-hydro setup, because it is super easy just to pour the water through and let it drain out. And for seedlings, I'm using this combination with the terrarium grit because those roots are of a different characteristic where I can also just pour it through, let the water drain out. And there's a wicking potential of this Akadama, which is very, very similar to Ceramis. And here's another little seedling that I want to show you where you can see how I've mixed up the terrarium grit with the Akadama to ensure aeration, oxygenation, not suffocating the roots, but keeping the media nice and wet. Now this little guy, it comes from that pot over there. I didn't know I had two. And this is a big, big test to see if it will make it with this Akadama terrarium mix. So far, I do see that there is a sign that I'm gonna lose this little leaf back here and that for seedlings is normal. I'm not worried about that. And I hope that you can see this little root starting right there. There's a tiny, tiny little root tip. And that is important and we shall see how that reacts once it touches the Akadama. For me at this point in time, this is a very viable material for the orchids. If it continues to be a great top layer with regards to the humidity, I might actually expand that for other parts of my pot where I use microfiber or I used to use sphagnum moss. 
I don't want to use sphagnum moss anymore. Microfibers can dry out extremely quickly, especially in the summer, and I have a job keeping up trying to keep them humid. So if the akadama can stay wet longer across the surface of the top as a top dressing, then I'm definitely very, very happy to say that akadama is going to be included and become a part of my setup as a staple. Because it is a volcanic substance as well, there are already some minerals included in here and I'm going to put up a chart right up at the end of the video. And I find that also very interesting because it avoids supplementing to some degree with additives like silicon because I do supplement in the summer with silicon for my orchids. And if I start to incorporate akadama into all the pots as a top layer, when the time comes to flush, that silicon would, from the akadama would actually disperse into the roots and be absorbed by the orchids. The silicon dioxide that is in here, it's at 42%. Then it has calcium oxide, magnesium oxide, manganese oxide, iron oxide, and aluminum oxide. So it's packed with minerals. Are they all good for the orchids? I would say that remains to be seen because the concentrations, and I'll leave a screen up right at the end of this video, the concentration is what the concentration is when it comes with the material. There is not the same amount of control as it, in inert growing as we do with the pH and at what level pH and how high will our TDS be. But for the time being, I find it very interesting especially when it comes to seedlings where you don't want to be fertilizing a lot because the roots aren't able to take up that kind of fertilizer, or you might be afraid of burning roots. It's just about the matter of flushing the pot and there are minerals already inside the akadama. And I find that super interesting. Of course, I'm watching this root right here. That, that black. I cannot exactly determine what it is, where it's coming from, why it happened. So this is the next route in question that will be observed. This seedling has plenty of roots in the pot, so I have no issues with regards to its health and its survival. I don't want to risk roots, but there's only one way to find out how this media acts as a surface layer, as opposed to microfiber or sphagnum moss. I know that this seemed a little bit dry cut and not very chatty and everything, but I had to kind of concentrate with what I was saying because it's only been five months, but it's been wonderful throughout the winter. And I wanted to push in a little bit more detail with regards to how I am considering using this long-term and why. We shall see in the coming six months whether it's working or it's not. In case you see my pots in the future, this is the video to, that I can reference and say what it is, why I'm using it. So yeah, it, it wasn't as flowy because my thoughts about this, it's kind of, sometimes it's difficult for me to put my thinking into words that makes sense. I hope there was a little bit here and there that you could glean from this video that did make sense. And if you have used Akadama in your orchid hobby before, please let me know. Let me know how you're using it and how you feel about it. Have you stopped using it? Is it something you tried and thought, now nah, this is too risky, you're not going there? Let me know and also why. I'd be super interested. This is a first for me, but I'm very happy to share the experience and the journey that I've had so far. And I am liking it. I really am. I appreciate you taking the time if you've made it this far, a lot. Thank you very, very much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe, please, and take care. Bye.